In this demo, we'll look at how Kasten provides a best-in-class solution for protecting OpenShift virtualization workloads. My environment consists of a managed ROSA cluster running on bare metal AWS nodes with both OpenShift virtualization and Kasten operators already deployed from the operator hub. Under storage, I've created an additional storage class that leverages the AWS CSI driver to provision IO2 type EBS volume. Expanding virtual machines, we see I've already created two test VMs running RHEL 9. Diving deeper into the storage configuration for my important VM, it's using my IO2 storage class and provisioning a raw block mode volume which subsequently allows for read-write many access. Whereas my other RHEL 9 VM is using the standard GP3 storage class, which uses a file system mode volume, subsequently limiting it to only read-write once access for that disk. So why is any of this important? Well, first, using a block mode volume eliminates overhead as the VM operating system will lay down its own file system on top of our PVC but longtime virtualization admins will care most about reason number two, live migration. Sadly, my other RHEL 9 VM is stuck on its node until I shut it down. Whereas my important VM can be seamlessly migrated between nodes due to its read write many PVC. And for EBS storage, read write many is only supported with IO2 type volumes in block mode. Thankfully, Kasten leads the pack with support for backing up OpenShift virtual machines with both file system and block mode PVCs. Jumping over to the Kasten dashboard, we see I've already configured an export location and a mutable S3 bucket to protect my backups against any malicious tampering. Under applications, I can see that both of the namespaces associated with my VMs have been discovered. So let's create a policy to protect our important VM. We want to perform daily snapshots, and most importantly, export those snapshots to our external repository. I'll initiate a manual run of this new policy, and jumping forward to a short time later, we can see that the backup captured the Kubernetes resources associated with our app, along with a snapshot of our 30 gigabyte PVC, and then exported about 1.6 gigabytes of actual data on volume to our external repository. Now, if I run a second backup of the same VM and then look at our backup details, we'll see, again, that a full 1.6 gigabytes has been transferred without having written any new data to my VM. So while a block mode volume provides performance and live migration benefits for my VM, no one likes having to do repeated full backups. However, by creating an AWS infrastructure profile, Kasten gains additional capabilities outside of what the current CSI specification offers, including support for EBS change block tracking. Let's test it out by adding some incremental data to our VM. First, I can see my initial 1.6 gigabytes of consumed storage. And to keep things simple, I'll generate 200 random one megabyte files. I'll return to the Kasten dashboard and initiate our final manual backup. And once complete, good news, no more full backups with just over 200 megabytes of new data being uploaded to our S3 repository. This equates to significantly faster exports and less repository storage consumption at scale. But as we always say, a backup is only as good as your ability to restore it. So after inadvertently removing my important VM, Kasten provides a simple, granular, self-service restore experience for our virtual machine and associated Kubernetes resources, whether in place or to an alternate cluster. So just a few clicks and minutes later, our restore has completed and I can see my virtual machine is once again up and running, complete with all of my additional files. So if you're interested in OpenShift virtualization, be sure to check out how you can get started with the number one Kubernetes data protection solution for free by visiting the link on screen. Thanks for watching.